What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a ton of engine maintenance on the 80 series. It's not gonna be as detailed as you guys are used to, just because I have a, a whole load of parts that I'm gonna be putting on there, but I'm gonna try to explain why I'm replacing certain things and kind of give you a good rundown on some good preventative maintenance. I'll keep it in tip top shape and not leave you stranded out there on the trail. Just to quickly go over some of the things we were replacing, we're gonna be doing the crankshaft seal, oil pump seal, various vacuum lines, fuel pressure regulator, valve cover gasket and the associated spark plug gaskets and throttle body gasket, PCV hose, PCV valve. These are some coolant hoses. People refer to them, I, I would guess, as the pesky heater hoses. This is actually a bypass for the rear heater hose. So from the factory, these come with a secondary heater under the passenger seat. It actually runs metal lines that go under the seat to this heater. This is a bypass because those metal lines always end up rusting and then you end up with a cool leak. So this and this and some clamps. Then let's see, we got a water pump. We got some other radiator hoses. We got a fuel filter, we got an alternator, thermostat. And then we got uh, cat plugs and wires. Uh, just, you know, your general tune up. I've already gone through all the suspension. So it should be in pretty good shape by the time I get all this stuff on there. Some other things, we got a winch and then a radiator. This is actually an all brass radiator. So no plastic on it, like the one that's in there right now. So you don't have to worry about it ending up swelling up and splitting on you there in the future. So yeah, let's get right into it. We got the bay here. I got the coolant already draining down. I think what we're gonna start with is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this battery in the battery tray. I'm actually gonna have to rig up a battery stay because this one is non-existent. But then we're gonna go ahead and pull the radiator and just kind of go from there. To be able to remove the radiator, you're gonna go ahead and pull your battery in the battery tray as well as the fan clutch, fan clutch shroud, headlights, grill, and disconnect both the upper and lower radiator hoses as well as the transmission cooler hoses. Next up is the old belts, uh, the water pump pulley, as well as the harmonic balancer. The harmonic balancer can be extremely tight. Uh, the spec is over 300 foot pounds. I got pretty lucky that my air gun actually ended up taking this off. Uh, if not, look on I Hate Mud. There's a few tips and tricks on how you can hold the crank and break this bolt loose. Now with the majority of everything out of the way, we're taking some simple green degreaser and we're going through and just cleaning up the face of this motor and just making it easier for me to work with. We're gonna be working on replacing the oil pump cover seal, uh, removing the alternator, removing the water pump, and then putting in a new crank seal. Here in just a little bit, I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to remove the oil pump cover seal. If you guys are at all familiar with 80 series Land Cruisers, you will know that these cover seals are very, very common for leaking. And mine was actually leaking pretty decent. I mean, over a thousand miles or so, it didn't burn a quart of oil, but it was still a pretty decent leak. Next, we were replacing both of the lower hoses, the thermostat, as well as this little coolant hose that you see that goes from the thermostat housing up to that metal line that runs in front of the engine. Getting this harmonic balancer bolt tightened down to 304 foot-pounds can be quite a challenge. I used a strap wrench. I would honestly recommend using a tool that threads into the provided holes on the front of the harmonic balancer. If you look on I Hate Mud, some people have made some at home, and it's actually a preferred method. This is just what I had laying around and accessible. So it pretty much rained on me the entire day yesterday, so I couldn't have my uh, normal camera out here. Um, I'll put in a little clip that I took on my phone explaining some things about the oil pump here. This is the old oil pump gasket. Uh, as you can see, it's it's pretty brittle and they end up breaking and cracking and leaking all over the place. So that's why people end up replacing them. You do have to pull the harmonic balancer to get to it. And then there's actually Phillips head screws. So these are the screws that come in the oil pump from the factory. And you can see this one was just about stripped. The rest of them came out pretty good. What he used was an air hammer and then actually an attachment that has a Phillips head on it. So you actually kind of rattle them loose and it makes them come out. Uh, the kit I got actually replaced them with Allen's, which uh, I can't say I'm more happy about it being Allen's. I kind of wish it was Torx, but uh, they'll work and it'll be a lot better than Phillips if I ever have to come back in here and do these, which I don't think I will. But aside from that, I uh, did the oil pump O-ring, I did the crank seal, uh, went ahead and did the water pump. Uh, we did an alternator. There's some belts on here. This isn't all tightened up yet. That's why that looks a little funny. I uh, went ahead and did the thermostat, which is right here, and then replaced this coolant hose, this coolant hose, this little elbow here, and then also this one that runs to the radiator. Next, we're gonna work on getting the new radiator in there. Uh, I do have to put a condenser in this thing, but I'm gonna have to order it. You can see where it's leaking right there. I mean, it's gonna be you know sooner than I can do it right now. So I'm just gonna have to put it back together for now and handle that at a later time. Although my trans cooler lines were not in bad shape, it's much easier for me to go ahead and replace them now while I have good access to them. We got our new radiator in. This one is all metal, no more plastic. Got our new trans cooling lines in. We got all the lines that run from the cooler 
They run in right there and actually deleted a metal elbow that was a little rusty and used some of the old hose as kind of like insulation to protect it from getting cut on the metal. Those run in there and they run back to the trans and then of course into the radiator for the cooler on there as well. Before I put the fan shroud back in, I'm gonna go ahead and start tearing into this valve cover, start doing the spark plugs and wires and cap and the rear heater bypass and all that good stuff. To be able to remove the valve cover, you also have to remove the throttle body assembly. So you're gonna need a throttle body gasket. If you go on witsend.com, they have a lot of these gasket sets, everything all pre-packaged for you. For instance, the valve cover gasket leak set comes with the valve cover gasket, the spark plug tube seals, and the throttle body gasket that you will need to perform this part of the job. Once you have it on the bench, it's a matter of cleaning this thing up, getting all the crud off of it, removing your old seals, the spark plug tube seals can be a little stubborn because they're normally dry rotted and cracked. As you can see, I'm using a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and just very lightly getting the edges to separate and prying those out. The PCV valve can also be quite stuck. As you can see, I had a little bit of trouble and had some hard pieces stuck down in there and just pulled them out with some needle nose pliers. Aside from cleaning up the valve cover itself, you're also going to have to pull these two half moons that I have circled here. They are metal and they are reusable. Just take a wire brush, clean all the RTV off of them. You will see where it is from the factory and you will have to put the same RTV in the same places. So the bottom of the half moon, you see with the bottom two arrows, you will have to put RTV all along that edge. And then the four arrows up top, once the half moons have the RTV on the bottom and are installed in the cylinder head, you will have to put a dab at each of the spots with the arrows before installing your valve cover. While we got our valve cover off, we're gonna do this rear heater bypass, and I'm just gonna kinda show you guys exactly what's going on here. I figured it'd be helpful for some people. So this is a good diagram depicting on what's gonna go on. So before you have all these connections, there's metal lines that run to the rear heater, and then afterwards, we're bypassing those metal lines and just doing a direct connection to our heater core. So we'll have heat like usual, you just wanna have heat in the rear. This is the OEM part number for the bypass hose. So you can go ahead and take a screenshot of that. You can find it on eBay uh, if you just look up the part number and that's gonna be this red hose right here. This hose is, I actually just got this one that has a slight bend in it um, and it's honestly from AutoZone. I know Gates sells the right hose that you can put in here, but it was easier for me just to get this through work. We have a account with AutoZone so I just went ahead and ordered it through them. And what that one's gonna do is connect right at this metal pipe and go straight to the firewall right there. So our other bypass is gonna go from our heater valve right here, which is actually, I'm gonna be replacing with the OEM part. It's gonna go like this, and then straight to the firewall. So typically from the factory, it goes down, there's metal lines, and actually you can see right here, see that really crusty looking line back there? That's actually one of the metal lines that ends up rusting out. So that's the whole reason people do this because it ends up being a bad coolant leak. We'll go ahead and get this done. It'll be a whole lot easier while the valve cover's off. Removing all the old hoses isn't too difficult. I recommend if you find one that is stuck, on one of the nipples, just take a razor blade and cut a slit down it, and then you'll be able to get it off. Of course, this is only for hoses that you're not gonna be reusing. As for the weird OEM clips with the cotter pin, I found using a pair of like wire snips and just kind of grabbing the cotter pin and wiggling it and pulling it out, and then that'll release it. So here's our bypass all complete. As you can see, now we have an empty line that runs to the rear heater there, another empty line that runs to the rear heater there. You can choose to remove those. They're really kind of tough to get to. I'm just gonna leave them. I'm gonna flush those pipes out. We'll remove the heater under the seat. Uh, this hose, you can see, was just a length of hose. And I actually used, you can see part number 28467. It's made by Gates. And it actually comes with like a 90 degree elbow. And the 90 degree elbow I used right here to replace this piece, reused our spring clamps because I like the spring clamps. Um, this is our OEM hose that goes right into our firewall and it connects to our heater. And then another coolant hose is actually this little guy who runs down through the intake manifold and then actually plugs into the block. And I'll go down there and show you guys that here in a second. All right, now looking at the back here, we are in the driver's side fender well, remove the front wheel. There is a really short stent of hose, like maybe two and a half inches, three inches long, and it goes from a metal pipe to a metal nipple, and that runs down from that elbow I just showed you. So I replaced that. It is a little tricky to get to. Removing the wheel makes it a whole lot easier. And then just to the left of that guy, you can see this brand new hose. You can barely see uh, that just plugs onto a nipple on the engine as well. So no, these are not easy to get to. Yes, you should go ahead and replace them while you're in here, uh, just so you don't have to worry about it. Particularly that short little one right there, I think that is a very, very common leak for people and it would be a pain to try to fix it out on the trailer out on the road. With all of our coolant hoses sorted out, now we're moving on to the vacuum lines. 
I got a bunch of links of OEM vacuum hose from Toyota, and you do have to cut them to length. They're not all pre-cut, so I'm just going through one by one and replacing these vacuum lines just so I don't have to worry about them dry rotting and splitting on me here in the future. Now we're going to go ahead and put our valve cover back on. With all of our other surfaces nice and clean, we're going to go ahead and put those half moon circles I mentioned earlier in the video with the appropriate amount of RTV in place. We can go ahead and set our valve cover on top and get our bolts started. Tighten these up in a cross pattern from the center working out and the factory spec is 15 foot pounds. I don't know if I'd recommend going that high unless you just slowly work your way up. I did mine to about 12 foot pounds and that'll be plenty tight. Now we'll go ahead and throw on our factory fuel pressure regulator. This is just a preventative maintenance item and there was nothing wrong with mine. We'll keep it in the truck as a spare. And then while we're here, go ahead and put on our new cap and rotor. Now to wrap this up, we'll go ahead and put in a set of OEM spark plugs, a set of wires, get our throttle body back on and torqued, replace our air cleaner and button up everything else that we may have had loose. Alrighty guys, it is now the week after the last time I was talking to the camera. This thing has been to Adventure Fest, it's been to work a few times, uh, it's been a few hundred miles since I did all of this maintenance that you guys saw me do, and everything's been working great. I haven't had any leaks and no issues at all, so I've been really happy with this and glad I went ahead and did all this maintenance, just so I can kind of enjoy this thing for a while and not have to worry about it. Now one thing I didn't get a chance to do is actually remove the rear heater unit from under the passenger seat. Um, and technically you can just leave it in there, it's not going to matter, uh, but I'm just trying to reduce some weight and also it'll kind of open up the bottom of the seat for a little bit of storage as well. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and pull this passenger seat out and then we'll start pulling that rear heater unit. Simply remove your passenger seat, remove some plastic trim, peel back the carpet and you can gain access to the heater. Once it's removed you can see I'm just cleaning it up with the vacuum and just getting any sort of debris that's out from underneath of there. To seal up our hole all I'm doing is actually using some VHB tape and a piece of aluminum. The reason I'm doing this is because it can be reversible for whatever reason in the future. We'll go ahead and throw some sound deadening on top of that, replace our carpet, bolt our seat back up, and we're good to go. So yeah, here we are. Here's the rear heater that I took out. Uh, there are some coolant hoses on the bottom. You can see all I did was take a razor blade and just cut them uh, just so I could quickly get this thing out of there for now. One day I'll pull the metal pipes that remain out of there, but right now it's just a little too much of a hassle and they're not uh, hurting anything. And now you can see we got a ton of space under our passenger seat and store some gear or whatever you want. So that is a big plus also of doing this rear heater delete. All right guys, so that about wraps up this video. I hope it was still helpful even though it wasn't, you know, as much of detail in me explaining every little bit and every nut size and every bolt size and all that good stuff. Uh, hopefully there was still enough detail for you to maybe know why you should go and do some of these maintenance items yourself. I'm really happy I went through and did those. Like I said, a couple hundred mile trip, uh, probably 10 plus hours behind the wheel of this thing last weekend and no issues, which is amazing for 273,000 miles now. Uh, went over two mountains, uh, well, Virginia mountains, but still uh, climbing those mountains with that engine, it's not very powerful. So I was a little nervous about that, but it did great. So highly recommend you look into doing these items. I think it's worth it. That way your weekend can be enjoyable and you don't have to worry about fixing your Land Cruiser out there while you're camping. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.